We've probably all heard the moon tugs on the oceans and causes the tides. Superficially, yeah, that makes sense. But if that's the case, then why does the ocean also bulge on the other side of the earth? The tides occur due to tidal forces. This is a force created due to the fact that gravity is not constant over large distances. It weakens at an inverse squared rate as you move away from the source of gravitation. Here on Earth's surface, any change in height or altitude has negligible impact on the feel of gravity. But across planetesimal distances, we notice tangible differences in gravity. Let's imagine Earth was a giant ball of water with no other sources of gravity. We'll place a motionless moon nearby. The moon has gravity and thus starts to accelerate every single molecule of water in our water world towards it. However, in this scenario, there is over 12 and a half thousand kilometers between these water molecules and these water molecules. This means the water closer to the moon experiences an ever so slightly stronger force than the molecules further from the moon. This causes them to accelerate faster, bringing them closer, which then causes them to accelerate even faster, and eventually our water world is stretched out like this. The key takeaway from this is that over very large distances, masses closer to a gravitational source move faster towards it or feel a stronger pull than those further from it. Now let's look at our Earth. There are three sections we need to focus on. The water on the side facing the moon, the center of the Earth, and the water on the side opposite the moon. At any given moment, a bunch of forces are acting on all bits of matter on Earth. We're going to ignore all of them and focus just on the moon's gravitation. When we introduce the moon's gravity, all three points experience gravitational attraction, but at different strengths due to their different distances from the moon. The length of the arrows represent the relative attraction. I've also written it here normalized to the Earth's attraction, since the arrows are so similar. We can now see the side closest to the moon has the strongest attraction. How can we make this more intuitive? Right now, we can see the tidal forces acting on all three locations. We're imagining our camera is motionless in its own unique frame of reference. But since we live on the Earth, we want to visualize this as someone standing on the Earth. That would mean for us, the Earth would look motionless. If we want to enter the same inertial frame as the Earth, we would have to subtract its attraction to the moon from everything else. We can also think of this as adding it to our camera so the Earth appears to have no tidal forces acting upon it. When we do this subtraction, we can see both the close and far side of the Earth have net tidal forces pointing away from the Earth. That's how gravity creates a tidal bulge on the opposite side of Earth. The Earth is accelerating away from that water just ever so slightly, which causes a slight outward tidal force. Think of it like that moment in an elevator, right as it starts to go down. As the elevator is accelerating you, you feel a little lighter than you were. In this example, the Earth is the elevator and the water is its occupants. I want to explain this more. But first, let's clear up some uncertainties. First, it's important to clarify this arrow only represents the tidal force. At any given time, you have Earth's gravity, the normal force pushing up on you, the centrifugal force of Earth's rotation, and the Coriolis force all working on you. This tidal force is just adding into that mix of forces acting together. So that 9.8 meters per second squared from gravity is still there. You would just subtract the tidal force from it, which is humanly nothing. Another uncertainty may be, if there's unequal acceleration towards the moon, how come people don't slowly fly away? Think back to the elevator example. Acceleration is just force. It's important to realize even though you're motionless on the ground, you're still undergoing a constant acceleration or force towards the center of the Earth. And it's a pretty aggressive acceleration. Therefore, in order to be pulled away from the Earth's surface, that pulling force needs to be stronger than the Earth's. The moon's gravity would never be strong enough to do that. Even if the moon was directly over your head and its gravitation as strong as it could be, you'd still be standing on the Earth, albeit about 20% lighter. So this unequal acceleration simply manifests in a slight force pushing you away from the Earth. 
and it's kept constant since the Earth and subsequently the oceans never get closer to the moon due to its orbit. I should probably mention the sun also has its own tidal force with about half the strength of the moon. The mechanism is the same. Usually it's not that noticeable, but when the sun and moon line up their gravitational fields like during new or full moons, these tidal forces compound and we get a rather strong tidal force in large tides. But that's not what this video is about. Let's comprehend how this incredibly weak force causes a tangible phenomenon. This is due to two properties. Firstly, that the ocean is a fluid, and secondly, it's kind of really freaking big. Fluids are very complex, but also kind of simple. If a lower pressure region exists near a higher pressure region, then molecules move from higher to low pressure. That's about it. The moon affects the entirety of Earth, the parts closer and further away the most. Because the ocean is completely connected, our tidal force can be thought as one massive differential pressure system. Now, only by influencing all of this water can we visually detect the influence of the moon's gravity. To recap and make sure we remember what we learned, tidal forces are differences in gravitational attraction due to great distances. You technically weigh lighter when the moon is above or below you. This change in weight creates minuscule changes in pressure in the ocean, but due to the sheer volume of the ocean, we get a tangible effect.